I'm a conscious consumer. I would say I'm a good person. I'm informed. I know what's right and what's wrong. The year is 2041 and everything is instant. Google Glasses from 2014 are now contact lens. With the blink of an eye, I can boot up my computer. You can't see it, but the web interface is seamless and clean in appearance. With computer control information you want to search before you even know you want to search it. Fully integrated. Marketing isn't as obvious as it was in the past. Algorithm monitors your tastes and preferences from first. It's like they say, no one knows you better than Google. <laughs> Remember things like forests, woodlands, wetlands, reefs, marshes? These are now landscapes of the past. Once these places were in walking distance from our houses, places where you would just walk around feeling nature. Look, uh, here. Here's this article about how people used to be able to escape the heat <laughs> by sitting under trees. <laughs> That's so cool. I'll send you a link. I wonder if there's a way... Oh, look. This company makes a line of hats so you can support your, your love of trees and reforestation. I think they're made of some sort of recycled resource as well. This way I can show that I care about this cause. Bye. The year is 2041, and everything is transparent. Transparents make it easier to know which brands are good and which ones aren't. Have you ever used that old app, um, Good Guide? Well, just like that, everything is given a sustainability karma score. You just scan the item, and it gives you a 1 to 10 scale uh, number ranking on how concerned you should be. 1, meaning very concerned, and 10, meaning not concerned at all. These easy-to-understand ranking systems take out the need to do any research, or even think. <laughs> Companies can't hide, lie, or misinform, because the information is all online. A similar point-based system is also in place in our cities. Uh, take Chicago, for example. A sustainable building plan developed by Green Projects Administrator Michael, Michael Burnside mandates for all buildings to meet a 200 sustainability point score. And it's by a variety of measures. 50 points for solar panels, 60 points for use of natural lighting, and 20 points for making the window reflections very friendly. This is essential. According to the UN, 70% of the world's population now lives in cities. And 70% of our carbon footprint comes from urban areas. Drought, flooding, and extreme weather have led to massive migration, swelling the cities, and in the process leading to massive conflicts for those who sought safety in countries without laws to accept them. I'm, I'm sure you've read all about the challenge of climate refugees. There have been droves of articles and enough three-minute YouTube videos to stream into a 10-hour Netflix documentary binge. But look, you can buy a coat to show your support. It's not clear the charity you're giving to, but there's a charity, so that makes you feel good. Bye. Bigger than I thought. The year is 2041, and everything is visual. With time efficiency and multitasking apps and programs available to the public, maximizing every part of the day, no one is held captive to reading wordy advertisements. Just words, words, words. Ads online and in real life are now visual. Video advertisements take up most social media content, a 
Of course, you've been amongst our fair community's 3,000 closest friends. Because of the emphasis on visuals, people are much more concerned about their image. A selfie is worth a thousand words. Us, conscious consumers, must brand ourselves with our causes, as much as businesses brand themselves as socially responsible and forward thinking. Years ago, economic developers started suggesting sustainable solutions as business solutions. Years ago, I spoke with Nick Benson, the program director for Iowa Initiative for Sustainable Communities, who worked with many struggling small towns throughout Iowa. One problem, how do you attract young professionals to your town? The solution, visually show young professionals how progressive and unique a small town can be. They introduced bike lanes, buildings installed solar panels, they created recreation areas, green spaces, urban farms, and sought out businesses with the sustainability values these young professionals had. Hint. According to this site, this quickly became the norm. Sustainable development, making the bottom line, people, planet, and profit, served fewer economic development. Further down in this article, it says, before the industrial agriculture bubble burst, Iowa imported 90% of their food. Once adopting local foods, people realized buying local food supported local business, helping the local economy. And it just simply tasted better because produce didn't have to be picked before it was ripe to be travel ready. I'm signing a few online petitions to request more local produce options in my city. It's really easy to show how socially conscious you are nowadays. It's all done on this government app called Our Voice. You just open the app, and based on your pre-selected preferences and information, you just swipe right or left on the issues you're most interested in. <laughs> and if I search the category of local produce, I can scroll through brief overviews and swipe all day. I can't really say how many of these petitions have come to fruition, but whatever I swipe right on appears on my social media profiles. It's what I support. Oh, look, I can purchase these boots to show how much I like the idea of local foods. All, all the money goes to the app so people can keep supporting the causes they feel passionate about. Bye. The year is 2041, and everything is wearable. I wear my causes on my sleeve, but they're heavy. Our technology has become more and more integrated with our bodies. Take my computer, for example. I even have a wrist strip electronic display that measures my biological processes. It's, um, it's similar to what uh, you all used in the 2010s with the watches that would count your steps, but this technology can track everything. Steps, but also Blood pressure, blood sugar, heart rate, calories burned, calories consumed, body temperature, nutrient levels, vitamin D absorption, stress levels, or cortisol levels. It can even add up the number of times I blink today. 23,082 times so far. All this information is saved on our personal security database. We're successful by, of course, ourselves, our doctors, and the government. There were rumors a couple years ago about companies having access to this data, but I, I think it's all rumors. What I'm more worried about is my lung capacity. My wrist strip measures my, my breathing to check for asthma attacks. Ground level ozone and airborne particulates paired with the warming weather makes everyone's health a little worse. We don't stay outside too long, in part because of the heat, but also because of the irritation of the eyes, nose, the throat, the coughing, the chest tightness. Some say the health we're facing is due to the fault of our booming industry generations ago. Concerned companies such as Alliant Energy and others who are members of the Electric Power Research Institute, they all had teams who worked on environmental related strategic planning areas such as air emissions and carbon planning. They produced lengthy corporate sustainability reports, but they struggled to get their nationwide companies to buy in before the effects of relatively short period of economic prosperity were irreversible. I'm a good person. I'm informed. I know what's right, 
I know it's wrong, and what makes me feel uneasy. Papas make it hard to ignore the problems, and I want to care. But with each cause is another heavy burden. The climate is all-encompassing, and as it changes, so does everything I know. If it's not one thing, it's the other. It is hard not to feel like everything I'm doing is either wrong or just not enough. What I really need is just a break from it all. Just a second to cancel out. Uh, I swipe out, I swipe out, I swipe out. But yet these pop-ups keep appearing. The algorithm knows these issues are on the forefront of my mind, despite the, my best efforts to escape. I am a conscious consumer. I'm a good person. I'm informed. I know what's right and what's wrong, but these causes are too heavy and are overburdened. I'm a, I'm a bad person. I'm informed. I know what's right and what's wrong, but I choose to ignore it in order to actively remain inactive. I can't breathe. Did you know trees are able to form carbon sequestration? Reforestation is a way to remove carbon from the atmosphere? I guess, I think I have a shovel, a couple friends. I could get permission to plant trees somewhere in town. Pretty easily. Look, there's an event next week to make care packages for climate refugees coming into town. They're making a week's worth of shelf-stable one-pot meals and handmade stuffed animals for the children. I think I can make that time. Next Sunday in Central Park, there's a farmer's market, as well as a thieves' market. The, the farmer's even selling CSA shares so I can have fresh local produce to supply Jesus. I'm excited to meet a farmer. In the 2013 Papas Medi Media Meaningful Brand Study, they found most people would not care if 73% of brands disappeared. And since then, they have. Companies resistant to change were left behind. It is the consumers and companies who have the foresight to see our trajectory and address problems facing our environment rather than ways to hide from our reality who are the most prosperous. It's true. The reality of our environmental catastrophe is terrifying. But we also have all the solutions at our disposal if we seek to share them.